it all I see heartache in no sunshine No, no, no Brothers, I had cry for their souls Brothers, leave it so young If you live by the God, then you gon' die by the gun Yo, you tuning in live. Kill the music. Then you gon' die by the gun. In the ghetto. I see heartache in no sunshine. No, no, no. But as I cry for their souls, brothers leave it so young. Yeah. If you live by the gun, then you gon' die by the gun. It's okay if you never shot you nobody. It's okay if you never caught you a body. It's okay if you never popped you no molly Suicidal kamikaze catching homies like a hobby It's okay if you never sold you no dope If you ain't never sold a kilo or some coke If you don't spin when none of your homies spin They think life a joke and they ain't even your smoke huh? It's okay if you never jumped off the porch You like playing sports, don't let them call you a dork hey, See the streets will never show no remorse Coming full force, leaving them like a corpse It's okay if you like living for the Lord You like going to church, don't let them get in your head Who you think these dudes return to when they dead, huh? Who you think these dudes cry out to when they scared? God yeah. I see heartache in no sunshine. No, no, no. But as I cry for their souls, brothers leave it so young. If you live by the gun, then you gon' die by the gun. Way down in the ghetto. In the name of Jesus, come on, y'all. Heartache in no sunshine. You tuning in? Give them heaven podcast. Yo. Married to the streets, even though she a thought. Look at all the seeds that people planted on the block. Said that he a gangster, he a gangster till he dropped. But trouble coming for you, whether you like it though or not. Died by the hands of another gangbanger. Caught him on the corner, he never should have been hanging. No ID on his body, so the corner couldn't name it. He been missing for some weeks and then nobody even claim him. Said, hey man, so you stiff with the love. Swimming in your sin, you could drown in the flood. Man, you don't want to hear the preacher man preach. Forgiveness is at hand, boy, salvation is in reach. Hey, how you gonna stand on your business with not no legs, huh? How you let them do get off up in your head? Who you think you return to though when you dead? Same person you cry out to when you scared. God. I'm preaching to the trenches right now. I see heartache in no sunshine. No, no, no. Brothers, I cry for their souls. Brothers, leave it so young. If you live by the gun, then you gon' die by the gun. Well, down in the ghetto. Yeah. I see heartache in no sunshine. Man, shout out to my nephew, Lil Brandon. What's up, nephew? Brothers, I cry for their souls. Give them heaven podcast. KMF, yo. Yeah. If you live by the gun, then you gon' die by the gun. Well, down in the ghetto. How many of you know died in the streets? How many of you know right now doing time because they feel for that lie? You better expose that devil.
My prayers for those who are headed to hell right now Who don't see destruction before them You need to repent and turn around Young gangbanger, young dope boy Don't do that to your family Don't do that to your children My prayers for those who are lost right now in these streets, man there's still hope for you. If you're alive today, there's time for you to, to repent. There's time for you to be healed and ask for forgiveness in the name of Jesus. Amen. You on that Give Them Heaven right now. Give Them Heaven podcast. Everybody, can you hear me, man? We're having difficulties earlier. Me and shout out to Brother Jared. We were getting everything ready together, though. But you tuning in live, man. Get your Bible live. We're going to do a little. We'll do some music right now. Shout out to Kato for this one. Yeah, shout out to Joe Madigan. I see you. Shout out to uh, Jay Diamond. What up, brother? In the mighty name of Jesus, every single one of y'all, man, tuning in. 375 of us from Facebook and YouTube. Get your Bible out. We about to get in that word. Then what we say, y'all, y'all ready? Say it like this. We want heaven. We want heaven. We want heaven down on earth. We want heaven down on earth. What you say? We want heaven. We want heaven. We want heaven down on earth. We want heaven down on earth. Hey, I get tempted just like you do. I got questions just like you do. I fight depression just like you do Been back to the beginning so many times If you only knew hey, Why you walking around with your eyes closed Walking around with that blindfold You forgot it was fivefold hmm? You don't see what I see huh? Time for us to intercede huh? You don't want to intercede huh? Confront evil man I'm, mm -mm. Always screaming out Jesus Always singing out Jesus Man I need my Jesus Yeah. Third day for the Lord man The soul Hey Hey, spirit of the sword, I bring war to the devil. Third day for the Lord, man, the score it was settled. Uh, for our kingdom to the core. Spirit man, get hungry, get your word and eat some more. We want heaven. We want heaven. We want heaven down on earth. We want heaven down. Give them heaven, y'all. What you say? Come on. We want heaven. We want heaven. We want heaven down on earth. We want heaven down on earth. Did what you say? Look, hey, yo, I get tempted just like you do. I got questions just like you do. I fight depression just like you do. Been back to the beginning so many times. If you only knew, man, straight up. Quit walking with your blindfold and your eyes closed. This fivefold ministry, baby, KMF. You tuning in live and direct. Oh, make it. I'm just giving people time to jump in. Just giving people time to jump in. Shout out to my other little nephew, man. YD Kevin on the track. This that new album coming out, y'all. Prayer changes everything. Everybody hashtag prayer changes everything. Huh? Y'all ready? I cry out, I cry out. I need help, I need help. I can't do it by myself. I don't need, hey. Everything you all right now. I need everything you all right now. Yeah, I need hope, I need joy, I need strength, I need peace I need everything you are just to get me through the week Who you are right now That's what you tell Jesus I need everything you are right now Yeah, kill my fleshly desire, aid this man is reborn I set myself on fire just so you could be warm These seeds I planted in faith, I watch them grow over years in every seed I planted, man, I water with tears You love to hear yourself talk, so I stay quiet when I'm amongst you If the godly life that you want, where well, better be righteousness that you hunger And you never say it's your fault, and you blame everyone in your circle It ain't personal, man, it's spiritual When I cut you off, it ain't hurtful, love Man, I'm sick of the religious people They never deliver people Always giving up on people 
I was switching up on people Man quitting on the little people Hit spin on the little people Acting one way in Sunday pulpit Monday come around the different people I ain't thinking about a million dollars Man I think about a million souls Man I think about the ooh, ooh, hey. For the widow that don't have no hope I ain't thinking about a sold out show I care less about your ticket sale I think about the one who strung out on dope, lost soul, man, hit it to hell. Man, I think about the one who hungry. Man, I think about the one who hurt it. Think about the one who thirsted for mercy. Think about the martyrs murdered. Think about the one in bondage. I do anything to see them free. The love of Christ, man, the blood of Christ. In the name of Jesus, the devil flees. Yo, everything you all right now. Tell him, I need everything you all right. I need hope, I need joy, I need strength, I need peace I need everything you are just to get me through the week Who you are right now, yeah I need everything you are right now What you tell them, y'all? Kill my fleshly desire, 80s, man is reborn I set myself on fire just so you could be warm These seeds I planted in faith, I watch them grow over years in every seed I planted, man, I water with tears You love to hear yourself talk, so I stay quiet when I'm amongst you If the godly life with you wrong way, better be righteousness that you hunger And you never say it's your fault, and you blame everyone in your circle It ain't personal, it's spiritual, when I cut you off, it ain't hurtful, yo Man, I'm sick of the religious people, they never deliver people Always giving up on people, man, always switching up on people He's spitting on the little people. Yeah, five, four. Boy, y'all ain't ready for this. Y'all don't want me to take it back, boy. It's that deliverance music. That true teller music. Y'all ready? Tell them five, four. To my eyes closed. Five, four. To my eyes closed. Five, four. To my eyes closed. Maybe you will grow if you try a little more. Put your face inside your Bible like you do your iPhone. Your face inside your Bible like you do your iPhone. The only thing in life you should keep. Y'all ain't ready? It's the only thing in life you should keep your eyes on till I'm Your flesh a mess and I can smell it in your meth breath <laughs> here, go, here go a new one, y'all Man, shout out to my nephew, man We prayed on this one Let me see if I can remember the words, though We ain't record this yet Y'all wanna hear new? Hashtag prayer changes everything Empower me, Holy Spirit I love this one. Brandon, this the one, baby. Empower, empower me. Super in my natural. I can't fight this battle without you. Within me. All right. Empower me to do what? Let me see if I remember. Holy Spirit. All right, look. Empower me to love Where to know that it is different A love that is contagious A love that is convicting Empower me to forgive They don't have to apologize Let this fragrance of forgiveness Be fitting in my father's eyes Empower me to give And share everything that I earn I ain't got no strings attached I want nothing in return Empower me man Bold Knowing you reward me Putting others before me I put my brothers before me Empower me to witness So boldly on streets I step on Singing to your faithfulness A pound of loud I dwell on Empower me as a husband Empower me as as a father, empower me as a son, as a soldier that's in your army. Yo, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, please empower me. I want everything that's kingdom pouring out of me. I acknowledge your name in the midst of all of this. Edify the body with wisdom and pure admonishment. Yo, come on. Empower me. Super in my natural. I can't fight oh. this battle. This that edify music. Look, let me see if I remember. Look, hey, yo. Oh, well, you the super in my natural. I can't win this battle here, man. Amongst these scavengers, sinful savages, humans who act like animals. The way you fix the broken and use it to me, spectacular. More of me will die now, so more you can live in me. I love how you convict me and cleanse me when you find sin in me. Yo, yeah, he not a force, man, he a person. You should get to know him more, the Holy Spirit working. Scripture the man wrote, you the one who inspired the scripture the man quote, hope, uh, let me glorify the king, the water you supply, you provide to my inner being, look, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, please empower me, cause I want everything that's kingdom pouring out of me, 
And I acknowledge your name in the midst of all of this Edify the body with wisdom and pure it not punishment Yeah! is <laughs> that one! How many of y'all need the Holy Spirit? How many of y'all glorify Jesus? Hands up. Say, empower me, Holy Spirit. Oh. Come on, Brandon. Testify. Yo. Mm. <laughs> we tuning in live. This that kingdom music. All right, I got your attention now. It's like 629 of us now. I just wanted to get your attention. I'm using music. Some of that music I ain't even recorded yet. I'm just excited about life, excited about Jesus. Today, man, I just want to talk to y'all, man, and share some things of, with y'all about contentment. Questions that a lot of people ask, right? Some of y'all ask uh, whether you're in ministry, whether you're you're not in ministry whether your life is good or not good sometimes you 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 have things in front of you and you still want more so before i begin to just uh, teach the word and get in the word and we could just share uh wisdom and love and edification and admonishment uh let me thank god for each of you father god thank you lord for these moments thank you for uh for a platform and an influence god that you've entrusted us with it's yours go all of this is yours these souls our families the word so holy spirit we acknowledge who you are and we ask that you lead us into all truth and understanding with simplicity of the gospel nothing to complicate freedom nothing to complicate who you are but they'll be so easy to receive your love and your teaching that you will reveal secrets and mysteries that only you can give from heaven right now we come as infants as children saying teach us dad i know you come to do one thing and it's to glorify the name of king jesus so we thank you king jesus we praise you, King Jesus. Grateful for mercy that's new every morning. Grateful for the perfect sacrifice, the Lamb of God without spot blemish that was sacrificed for mankind and for a sinner like me, a fetter like me, a gangster like me, a thugged out inmate like me. And you would come and wash away my sins when you didn't have to. Oh, Lord, I got gratitude in my heart because I know I'm supposed to be dead. I'm supposed to be in, in hell for the words that I spoke, for the people that I hurt. Father God, for the blood on my hand, Lord, for the thoughts that were corrupted and perverted and evil and greedy. Yet you found a place for me and made room for someone like me, Lord. Grateful, grateful for your love. I never found another love like yours. Thank you for my family. Thank you for my marriage. Thank you for my children. Thank you for giving me chance at the chance at the chance to make things right, Lord. There's somebody out there who don't know you the way they should know you. And today, let it be the day that they fall in love and begin to enter into fellowship, complete peace and fellowship. Where they begin to fall in love with your promises, when they fall in love with the heartbeat of heaven, Father God, and begin to be committed and devoted to who you are, not because they have to, but because they want to. And they express it from obedience. They express it out of gratitude. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I know you, Dad. I go straight with confidence to the throne room. And I want my brothers and sisters to have that same joy when they go to the throne room. Because I know you are so real. I know you care about every detail, every concern of our life. All that we have, Father God. Apostle Paul said, I have learned to be content whether I have it or whether I don't. Lord, you taught me in these times, Father Thank you, Lord, for being with us. Holy Spirit, have your way. Rebuke the voice. Silence the tongue that will bring discord, distraction, doubt, or disbelief. Disbelief for anybody who would try to come and be a distraction, Father God. Right now, just stop the enemy. Anything in the households that, that, that will make somebody look the other way or think about something else, stop the enemy right now. Help us bring every thought to the obedience. Let it be kept and, and captive to the obedience of Jesus Christ and to your word right now so we could just learn from you. We can hear from you. Have your way in the name of Jesus. Amen, y'all? Ooh, come on. Act like you know him, man. Better act like you know him, man. Man, I wish things would just work out for us. How many of y'all ever said that? I just come. I, sometimes, man, I don't, I don't think that God has that for me. Or uh, I just wish we had more. Or we're lacking this. Maybe if we just had that. Like, there's certain things that you desire that God hasn't given you. And that doesn't mean he doesn't care. I think he's trying to teach you something in the midst of all your possessions, in the midst of all your everything that you have right now. And you still want more, more, more. 
And God's saying, I'm not going to give you the desires of your possessions, but I'm going to give you what you need right now. Because even if you don't have what you want, you have me. And here it goes. I'm enough. I'm enough. Maybe you prayed for somebody who had cancer. Please take the cancer away. You prayed for some a husband and a wife. Please bring my husband back. Bring my wife back. Please save her. And maybe maybe things don't go the way you want. Maybe there's, there's somebody out there that don't want to be in covenant. And there's one person that wants it, but the other doesn't want to be restored. And it hurts you. And maybe you're saying, God, please just say this. Please make her love me. Make, make him love me. Make him be faithful. Make her be faithful. And the other person doesn't want to. And sometimes, I don't know why, but... Some relationships, they don't work. And I never preach divorce. And I never preach the, 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 the leave. But sometimes people do part. And what happens when they part? Do you leave God because they left you? Or do you find out in the midst of that trouble, in that midst of that aching pain, in the midst of what you're going through, you have enough because Jesus is with you. And even though that it hurts, and even though you somebody leaves your side, God will never leave your side. I don't know who this is, but there's somebody out there that needs to hear this. He is with you. He is with you right now. You are not alone. I know you feel like you're alone, but you are not alone. Please believe that. God, I feel you with me. I have hope in you. In the name of Jesus, there's somebody out there that needs to hear this. Be content in your situation right now. How do we pursue contentment, guys? How do we pursue it? Unfortunately, man, just the thought of being content is much easier said than done, right? Contentment isn't necessarily something we can just turn on like a, like a light switch, but it's something that we got to learn. Contentment is a state of the heart. It's a posture that must be cultivated by humility, surrender, and repeated trust in God's goodness because he's a sovereign God. He's good. He's in control. Whether, you, whether he heals you, whether he brings your marriage back, whether he does what you want him to do or not, he's still God and he's still sovereign and he's in control. Do you understand that? In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, lacking no good thing, the young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will act. Amen. Trust in his sufficiency. Even if, say even if, I trust in him. Even if it doesn't go the way I want it to go. Oh, that's hard for people to, that is hard for some people to accept. Tell me that ain't hard for you to accept. You want, to, you want him to answer your prayer. But the question is, even if he doesn't answer it the way you want it or on the time you want it, will you still trust in him? Because he's acting. Amen. He, he will act upon his, in his will, on his behalf. God's timing is greater than your timing. Trust me, man. Two things I ask of you, it says in Proverbs 30, uh, 7 through 9. Two things I ask of you. Deny them not to me before I die. This is what he says. Remove far from me falsehood and lying. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food that is needful for me Lest I be full and deny you And say who is the Lord Or lest I be poor and steal And profane the name of my God He's saying man just give me enough So I don't take Give me enough so I don't forget who you are But don't give me, don't give me too little Don't give me too much Just give me enough Are you okay with that enough that he gives you this season Or are you like this Give me give me give me give me I want more 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 followers More money More affirmation I want to be noticed more I want to Whatever it is Like I want to I want to be at this 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 crowd I want to be Amongst these people I want to be In this position And God says No You have enough If I give you any more right now You'll forget about me If I give you any less right now You'll do something wrong Like You got to be honest with yourself man God saves you from you man To be honest you got to rest satisfied. Satisfied. I just uh, 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 read this with my, with my nephew earlier. We were talking about this. Before we got in this, I was already uh, sharing a little something about contentment. And the Bible said, if they listen and serve me, they complete their days in prosperity and their years in pleasantness. Some translations in the Bible say contentment. Job 36, 11 in that. It says, the fear of the Lord leads to life and wh- whoever has it rest satisfied. For rest, contentment. He rests content. The fear of the Lord leads to life. And whoever has it is content. He will not be visited by harm. He will be protected. Ain't that beautiful? God protects you as you rest in him. Let me me ask you this question. Is God good? 
Can you trust him? Is he good and can you trust him? What about when he withholds something from you? Is he still good? Yes. What about when your money runs out? When the lights get turned off? When you feel a situation is unfair? Is God still good? Yes. In both the light and the heavy, the beautiful and the broken, God is good. The answer is a thousand times, a million times. Yes, he is a good God. He is faithful. Our eternal good. Come on, everybody, hashtag, hashtag this. Say, Jesus, my eternal good. Let me see who's participating in tonight. It's 736 of us on Give Them Heaven podcast. Every single one of y'all tuning in tonight. Let me see you hashtag if you're not ashamed. Say, Jesus is my eternal good. He's your eternal good. Let me see before I go. My eternal good. Not a temporary good. Eternal good. Mm. That's better than your temporary situation. There we go. I see you. Eternal. Eternal. There you go. Eternal. Yes, I see you soldiers oh. Jesus himself talked often about contentment Using various metaphors and parables To get this deeply rooted heart issue Because it is a heart issue And he said to them Take care and be on your guard Against all covetousness For one's life does not consist In the abundance of his possessions Your life does not consist In the abundance of your possessions Amen But first seek the kingdom of God And his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Now, some people say, I want to go to church so my life gets blessed. I get that. And it will. You'll be blessed with a healthier mindset. You'll be blessed with a better response. But that doesn't mean that, that successful the way the world says is the norm. Listen, that doesn't mean you're going to blow up and be an influencer. That doesn't mean that you're going to blow up. And it's not a sin to be rich. But I'm saying when you expect like this is what it is, that's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible says that we learn in, in, in lack of need how to trust our providers. The Bible says that we learn how to be content when we don't have when we do have imprisonments and beatings. Like there is a life where we suffer for Jesus. That doesn't mean we you can't be blessed with with uh, with, with with increase in what's called. But if it doesn't come, remember, even if is it still good to follow Jesus? Yes. Do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Again and again, Christ commanded his disciples and for us to seek satisfaction in him and his eternal kingdom rather than in the things of this world. He draws our eyes upward. You get it? And urges us to look at the incredible richness that he offers us. The eternal kingdom he promises is everlasting and it's glorious. It's wonderful. It's beautiful. It's sustaining and it's satisfying to the soul. Contentment and godliness equals great gain. Christ followers should focus their effort on pursuing holiness in conduct. Contentment with godliness. Godliness. Listen, the followers of Christ should focus their effort on pursuing holiness and conduct attitude and thought come on holiness and conduct your attitude about it and the way you think your, your the pattern your thought pattern your attitude when someone tries to correct you tries to lead you try to disciple you what you're doing how you respond to truth how you respond to correction how do you respond as the Holy Spirit convicts you it's not to condemn you It's to convict you And say guess what Let's change this way of thinking The way you look at this Let's change this When well, they think I'm a drunk or they, they think I'm on pills I gotta take these pills Because it's for my pain thing I get that look But if they say that Not to abuse it Don't be con don't, don't feel offended Because someone's trying to help you Stay balanced and healthy And sober minded I love medicine I think God created good medicine To help people But let's be honest People abuse medicine People abuse things. So if somebody's in your life and they're trying to correct you and say, hey, you're abusing what God gave you to use and you're abusing it, don't be offended. 
your attitude, your conduct, and the thought pattern, you got to change. The world, everybody's not against you, sis. Everybody not against you, bruh. Take that mindset off. Put another mindset on. It says the righteous love correction. Amen. They should choose to be content in whatever circumstances God has given them, just as Paul himself had done while in prison. We are told to flee from all this eagerness to get rich and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance. And here's, here's my favorite one that I'm learning right now. Help me, Lord. Empower me, Holy Spirit. I need more gentleness. I need gentleness, y'all. Sometimes I get uh, aggressive. Sometimes I get frustrated. And, and right when I think I have it, a part of me shows that I have so much growing to do. Holy Spirit, give me gentleness. Give me gentleness with my wife, gentleness with my children, gentleness with my nephews, gentleness with the people we disciple, gentleness with my enemies, gentleness, Father God, that I'm still bold and strong, but I'm gentle. It is impossible to be content. Watch this. When our hearts are set on gaining more. Ugh, write this down. It is impossible to be content when your heart, when your corazón is set on gaining more. We will not remain godly for long if we are not content with what God has given us. A desire for godliness is quickly eroded by a, by a greedy, covet spirit. If you want what people have, I want what they have. I'm greedy for more. You will never have contentment. The Bible never says that it's a sin to be rich. Remember I said that. There are examples in scripture of God blessing his servants with tremendous material wealth. But 1 Timothy 6.17 instructs the wealthy this way. Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in their wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. The difference is in the heart, but greed and contentment are states of the heart. When we choose to be content with the riches of Christ rather than pursue material riches, our lives will be more in line with God's desire for us because where your treasure is, there your heart will also be be amen godliness is a god-centered life come on contentment with godliness creates great gain equals great gain godliness is a god-centered life somebody write that down at home write that down put that down so that godliness is a god-centered life it grows not through the pursuit of a process, but through the presence of a person, which is Jesus Christ, is the mystery of godliness. 1 Timothy 3.16, his presence in your life is your hope of becoming the person that God called you to be. Christ is in you, the hope of glory. Contentment is finding joy in what God has given you. The opposite of contentment is greed, which destroys your capacity to enjoy what God has given you. Contentment is a Christian grace that grows over time. It does not come quickly, easily, or naturally. Paul says, I have learned, I have learned to be content. That's in Philippians 4.12. A Christian comes to contentment, not so much by a way of addition as by a way of subtraction. Ugh. Contentment does not come by adding to what you have, but by, by, but, by, but by subtracting from what you desire. The world says that you will find contentment when your possessions rise to meet the level of your desires. Uh, -uh. The Christian has a, a, another way to, to, uh, for contentment that is he can bring his desires down to his possessions. This is all I got and I'm okay with it. This is all I am this season and I'm okay with it, God. I don't have to be popular. I don't have to have a packed out church. I don't have to be doing ministry or sold out shows in a Coliseum. If that's not for me and you don't want to, and you haven't, any, it gave me a territory or large, I'm not going to covet what others have. You might see something that I don't see. It might destroy me. I might get the big head. If you didn't give me all this money, it's a reason that you didn't want my family to have a, a, an increase this season and you giving us just enough. Why? So we don't forget you. So we don't steal You've given us enough just to be grateful. And guess what? If that's you testing our hearts, then so be it. Because I want to have fruit that remains in the name of Jesus. Teach us how to be content. Somebody hashtag that. Teach us how to be content. Mm. Do we all have a problem with being content at times? I can admit it. It's like sometimes I forget where he brought me from. Not all the time. 
Sometimes I do, and I gotta, I gotta catch myself. Maybe you be honest with yourself. Maybe, maybe you, he's brought you level to level, and you forgot that. Hey, it's so easy to go right back down if he wanted to take you down. Me and my family started over from trash bags or, or just clothes and hand-me-downs, and I didn't have cameras. I just had an iPhone, and I, and sometimes I, I just miss those raw videos where. Where I didn't have, I didn't have nobody doing effects on I didn't have all these microphones. All I had was just an iPhone, my Bible, my baby in my hand, and a heart full of contentment and gratitude to praise and sing of his faithfulness. And God did miracles and did beautiful things with the little I had. And then sometimes, man, I was like, man, if I get this or if I do this, it's going to, everybody else has that mic and everybody else has that. And man, God's like, man, simmer down, little homie. <laughs> Calm down, Brian. And do not forget that I'm the one that multiplies. Forgive me, Lord, when I forget. Ain't nothing wrong with excellence. Ain't nothing wrong with that stuff. But don't forget the hand behind it. Don't forget who brings increase. Don't forget whose anointing it is, whose glory it is. Oh, I have learned to be content. Whether I have or whether I don't. Something that we learn, amen? Why is godliness with contentment great gain? You cannot keep what you gain. You can get rich, but you can't take nothing with you. None of your shoes. You want to know what I do in the name of Jesus? Not even, man, you know what? I'm not, not even that it's the right hand or the left hand. Just know that I have an open closet to whoever wears my shoe size. They can come get whatever they want. Because I know I can't take none of that with me. I don't care if I wore one time. If I didn't wear it, you can have it if you want it, man. Straight up. Why? Because it means nothing. Not a chain. Not a shirt. Not a shoe. Not a car it means nothing. I'm grateful for the for the temporary moments we could use it, and you let me feel good and things that, that people bless us with, but it means nothing. It means nothing. You will encounter powerful temptation. People who want to get rich, they fall in temptation and a trap into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge plunge men into ruin and destruction. Because all they think about is more, 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 more. The love of money is a root of all kind of evil. Not the money, it's the love of it. If you set your heart on money, you expose yourself to powerful temptations that ruin many people. What else can happen? You could wonder from your faith. You want to get rich? Guess what? Guess, guess what happened with your eagerness to get rich? You might wonder from your faith. Some people eager for money have wondered from the faith. In the parable of the sower, our Lord speaks about the seed that is choked out by the thorns and the thistles. The word of God cannot be planted because it's choked out. All it does is worry. It's worried about the affairs of life. It's worried like, what am I going to eat? Like, am I going to have more? Like, it's worried about the wrong things. So the word doesn't, it just chokes it out. The deceitfulness of wealth and the desires for other things. Money chokes the fruit of God's word in the lives of so many people. Even in the church house, man. Can I say something? You don't have, you don't have to force nobody to, to pay their tithes, man. You don't, have to, you don't have to keep saying it a million times, hey, pay your tithes. If the Holy Spirit draws them to put their money in that basket because they get fed there and they want to honor the, the house of God, amen. But when you got to manipulate people to keep sowing into that, that tithe basket, manipulate them. Look, we, we say one time, man, if you want to partner with the ministry, cool. If you don't, it's okay, man. We got God's provision. And if God doesn't want us to have that this season, it's okay. We find contentment over here. Get it? And I think you should give to God what belongs to God. But you should be a cheerful giver. And nobody should ever have, have to force you to do that. You should do that because you want to do that. Because you want to honor the place where you're being fed at. But it's not a salvation thing. That's just, that's just your heart posture. One who withholds and one who gives freely. One who says, look what I did. One who grumbles when they give. And one who's a cheerful giver and say, God, you've given me everything, Lord. Let me sow into you. You're giving me everything. Let me help a family. Let me bless this ministry, God. I believe what God, I believe what they're doing in the name of Jesus. You want to get rich? You're going to experience great sorrow if this eagerness inside of you, this greed inside of you to, to get so much, you will experience sorrow. Some people eager for money have pierced themselves with many griefs. 
Money is a great servant, but it's a terrible master, y'all. If you set your heart on money, money will break your heart. You will not keep what you gain. You will fall into powerful temptation. You may wonder from the faith. You will pierce yourself with many griefs and sorrow. That's why godliness with contentment is great gain. When you have less, learn the art of contentment. This rare jewel is not found when you have more, but when you have less. Bring your desires down to the level of your possessions, y'all. Learn to enjoy what God has given more than, more than you grieve what he has taken away. Hebrew 13, 5 says, keep your life free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He's with you to the end. He is enough. Philippians 4, 11 says, not that I'm speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. Luke 12, 15 says, and he said to them, take care and be on your guard against all covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. 1 Timothy 6, 6 says, now there is great gain in godliness with contentment. 1 Corinthians 7, 17 says, only let each person lead the life that the Lord has assigned to him and to which God has called him. This is my rule in all the churches. 1 Corinthians 7.24 So brothers, in whatever condition, condition each was called, let, the, let him remain with God. 2 Corinthians 12.10 says, For the sake of Christ, then I am content with weakness, insults, hardship, persecutions, disasters. For when, when I am weak, then I am strong. Ugh, he's talking about hard times and he's still content. How many of us can really relate to that though? How many of y'all can really say that in beatings, imprisonments, catching cases for the lord persecution for the lord ridicule for the lord laughed at for the lord that you find contentment in that isn't that a heart that you want i, I desire that heart now i didn't mind not desired it in the beginning because i didn't know about it but as i'm growing more in christ i'm like man that's something that's something that i can admire in apostle paul in jesus and all these leaders of the faith when you see them when you look up you're like man give me a heart that that's okay if I have less. That's okay because I know who I have with me. I believe if we teach each other that, right? And we teach our kids that, nobody leaves disappointed, man. No, 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 nobody is nobody is just in, in this place where everyone's complaining and everybody's competing and, and, and it's greed there. Like when you think about other people, you're not gonna, you're not gonna be a greedy person and, and try to force your way places, force your way in circles, force your way at tables, force your way into features, force your way into pulpits, force your way into tours, force your way into videos, force your way to be popular, force your way to be seen. When you have contentment, it's not about what you want, it's what God wants. So if God says step to the back, you are already in the back because you know what it is. I don't have to be seen. I know that the one who lives inside of me is using me to serve. I don't have to be have a microphone. I don't have to be behind that pulpit. I'm okay with just serving i'm okay with just praying i'm okay with just being a servant of christ but i'm content and guess what the gift that i have inside of me the sermon that i have inside of me the song that i have inside of me the talent the treasure it's gonna make room for itself nobody has to bring me to the front god will bring me to the front and i'll know then that he gets the glory when i'm being used and I won't have to, I won't have to point fingers. I won't have to backbite, backbite, whatever. And I don't have to be, be amongst people that, that put other, I'm better, you're better. Like, I don't got to do all that because I know where God is putting me and I'm okay with that. And it shows because there's a race to the top, even, even, even in the name of Jesus with a fitted hat, it's a race to the top where people want to have this identity. They want to be, they want to be at this certain place because they think when they get to this place, it's success. When they get to this place, we're okay now. We're in the cool, but it's not. It, the Bible says, be careful lest you drift away. Be careful lest you be pierced with many griefs and sorrow for your covet and greedy heart. It don't have to be just for money. It could be for, it could be for likes. Listen, my beloved brothers, has not God chosen those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of his kingdom, which he has promised to those who love him? James 2, 5. James 4, 8. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Matthew 24, 45. Who then is the faithful and wise servant whom his master has set over his household to give them food at the proper time? Trust me, if God can trust you, God will use you with much. If he can trust you, can he trust you? Philippians 4.12 says, 
I know how to be brought low and I know how to abound in any and every circumstance. I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. Philippians 4.19 says, And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. That is a father who, who, wants to, who wants to supply you for what you need. That is a God who, he, man, he knows what we need when we need it. And he'll come right on time. And can't nobody say, hey, I did this. Because you know when God sent it. You know when God used someone to give it to you. Oh, watch this. Proverbs 28, 25 says, a greedy man stirs up strife. What does a greedy man do? He stirs up arguments and strife. But the one who trusts in the Lord will be enriched. I love this. Proverbs 28, 6. Better is a poor man who walks in his integrity than a rich man who is crooked in all his ways. Man. Proverbs 38 says, Remove far from me falsehood and lying. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food that is needful for me. I just want what you have for me, God. I don't want to have what Pastor so-and-so has. I don't want to have what that ministry have. If it's not for me, I don't want it. I just want what you have needful for me. Can we say that tonight? Can we start fixing our minds to, to say that over our lives? I just want what's needful for me right now. Oh, come on, man. That's where it begins right there. Saying, God, whatever you have for me, I want. What you don't have for me, it's okay. I'm not trying to pray something out of your will. Just let thy kingdom come, thy will be done in my life. I pray this all the time for people. I say, every beautiful thing that you have written for their life, let it come to pass. Every beautiful thing that you have written for my life, say this with me, let it come to pass in the name of Jesus. What it all comes down to. Y'all ready? At the end of the day, contentment is not an issue of circumstance, but an issue of the heart. Your heart ain't content. Your heart ain't right. It's the wrong state of heart. So let's get that heart right. Father God, forgive me when my heart gets like that. Cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Thank you for mercy that's new every morning. Give me a heart that is content. Give me a heart that is grateful right now in the name of Jesus. So as we seek to hold our hearts in a posture of surrender, we must allow the Lord to urge us to an even deeper kind of faith. Not only a faith that hopes and believes for big things from a big God, because there's nothing wrong with you believing in big things from a big God. But listen, but also a belief that even if the answers and provision never come, because they might not come the way you want them to come, God is still good and sufficient. Can I see somebody hashtag that? God is still good and sufficient. You got to say that because so many people, man, they pray. And when God doesn't come through, oh, he ain't real. Why? Because he ain't bless you with them, with the bands you want, with the Mercedes, with the SUV you want. He ain't bless you with that big house. So he ain't real. Come on, man. Maybe he sees something you don't see. Are you OK to say I'm, I'm OK, God, if you don't give that and mean, really mean it? Huh. Whether after years of waiting, if your prayer didn't answer the way you wanted to. In your difficult circumstances. As you lean on him, he will provide you with strength to find contentment no matter what. Because the truth is that even if your prayers aren't answered, we can find complete and full satisfaction in him. No matter what, even if the provision we ask for never comes, the Lord will still provide himself. He provides himself because what? He is enough. That's what I want you to hashtag right now. All 900 of y'all right now, there's 900 of us. Can I please get all of y'all to participate and just hashtag this? He is enough. Come on, he is enough. Hashtag that, man. All of y'all soldiers, he is enough in the name of Jesus. Jesus is willing to forgive you for your sins today. Jesus is willing to deliver you today. Jesus is willing to lead you and guide you today. Jesus is willing to love and care for you today. Jesus is willing to answer your prayer today. Jesus is willing to strengthen you, provide for you, anoint you, fear you, and bless you today. But the question is, are you willing to let Jesus heal you? Are you willing to let Jesus save you? Are you willing to let Jesus forgive you of your sins? And are you willing to let Jesus lead you and guide you? Are you willing to let Jesus love and care for you? Are you willing to let Jesus strengthen, provide, anoint, fill, and bless you today? Are you willing to let Jesus do that and a whole lot more for you today? Are you willing to call on his name right now? Are you willing? 
Jesus is willing, but are you willing to let him come into your life today so he can clean up your heart, transform your mind and make you a new creation? Because the scripture says that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. All things become new. Come now, he says, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Come, let us return unto the Lord. For he had torn and he would heal us. He had smitten and he would bind us up. And the Lord says in Matthew 11, 28, where he says, Come unto me all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. How many of y'all are tired right now? Jesus says in John 3, John 6, 35, I am the bread of life. He that come to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Jesus is willing to do anything for you right now. But you must be willing to come to come to him for it. That's why in Hebrews 4, 16, it says, Come boldly into the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. That is, whatever we need, Jesus says, Come to me, that you may find mercy, grace, and help in the time of need. Without faith, we cannot please God. So it's going to take faith. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and he is a rewarder to him that diligently seek him. If you've been on drugs, Jesus is still willing to touch you. If you've been, been on alcohol, Jesus is still willing to touch you. If you've been a prostitute, Jesus is still willing to touch you. If you've been a homosexual, a whoremonger, cheating, stealing, lying, killer, whatever it is, Jesus is still willing to touch you. He doesn't care about those sins you have in your life. He will touch you and forgive you, but you must come to him right now. He come to him for mercy. Come to him for grace right now. I've been, I'm living proof, a walking testimony, a miracle. Dirty Brian, dirty, thugged out inmate, deadbeat daddy. Didn't want nothing to do with God. Didn't want nothing to do with his people i thought it was all fake i thought the love had a string attached i thought people wanted something in return but guess what when i came to him i was broken i had no no choice but to look up and say save me from me save me as i call upon your name if you are real if there is hope if you can't forgive me i want it how hungry are you for jesus how desperate are you right now for something different if you've been disobedient to your parents and your teacher's kids jesus is still willing to touch you if you've been killing people with your tongue, gossip, slandering, backbiting, Jesus is still willing to touch you. If you've been doubting the reality of God, Jesus is still willing to touch you right now. If you've been disrespectful to your wife or to your husband or to your children, Jesus is still willing to touch you. If you are sick and you can't get well, Jesus is still willing to touch you. If you want your sins to be forgiven right now, Jesus is willing to touch you right now. If you've been hurt, if you've been heartbroken, your emotions been damaged. Jesus is willing to touch you right now. If you feel blind and lost, Jesus is still willing to touch you right now. He is willing to clean you up. He's willing to save you right now. All you got to do is be willing to repent and believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God who died upon the cross for our sins and that rose from the dead and with all power in his hands. If you come trusting in the Lord right now, he is willing to touch your life and you will never be the same. I believe, Lord. Come on. Somebody out there, hashtag this, I believe. I believe. That's the first thing you have to do in faith. I believe there's no other way. I believe you can, you, you can forgive me for my sins. I believe that you can save me from, from what I've done with my life. I believe that you can fix what I've, what I've messed up. I believe that there's hope to get off these drugs. I believe that there's hope to save my marriage. I believe that there's hope to get rid of this unforgiveness. I believe that there's hope to help me mentally, heal me mentally, fix me, Lord. I believe in the name of Jesus. Come on, I believe y'all. Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I'm praying for every family represented. There's 934 of these families represented. God, I want you to do what you do best. Let your healing hand touch every family member, every family represented. I pray right now for restoration. I pray right now for salvation. I pray right now for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. I pray right now for the increase in the empowerment of humility. I pray right now, Father God, their hearts will be transformed. Minds will be transformed. I pray right now that people will be hungry for righteousness, hungry for the Holy Spirit, hungry for living water right now, thirsty for who you are right now. Let them desire who you are right now in the name of Jesus. Have your way, King Jesus, right now. Healing, Lord, where needs healing. 
fix what is broken. You know who they are, where they're at. Watch what God receive this, y'all. Receive this. I'm just, I'm just gonna pray and just receive. You know who you are. I cannot wait to get a praise report. Let your faith, let your faith right now. Let your faith make you whole right now. Yes, let your faith make you healthy and whole right now. You ready? Bring healing, bring restoration, fix what is broken, fill what is empty. Remove every unclean spirit. Transform the mind. Transform the heart, Father God. Let them receive this. So, so simple, Lord. Let nothing be complicated. They receive your goodness. They receive your love. That godly sorrow that would lead to true repentance right now. That they feel your love. They feel who you are. They feel hope again. Oh, and as they, as they fall in love with your presence, as they fall in love with your heartbeat right now, let them have the fruits of repentance. Yeah, you get up, go flush the drug. You get up, go pour out the alcohol. You get up, throw away your vapes, your cigarettes, your pills. Get rid of it. Throw your gang flag away. You right now start erasing the numbers in your phone that lead you to destruction and hindrance of growth. Right now in the name of Jesus, the fruits of repentance. Let there be evidence today that something happened to you right now. There is an encounter right now that's taking place in your heart, in your house, in your living room, in your phone. Let it be real right now in the name of Jesus. Let heaven invade you right now. Living water through your belly. Living water stirring to your inner being right now. Free. Freedom. Free healing, free forgiveness. Receive this in the name of Jesus. And even if God doesn't bring what you want in your prayers, He's still good and He's still God. And be content with that. He is enough. Whatever you're going through, may He may He strengthen you. Whatever you're going through, any trial, any test with your enemies, with family, with friends, sickness, whatever you're going through. Let him strengthen you as you face these things. Let your heart be postured towards heaven the right way. And let all of King Jesus, all of his kingdom be glorified by your attitude, your conduct and your thoughts. Because you express it in gratitude by your obedience. You express how much you love him. By the way you live your life in front of others. Heaven right now on earth. Heaven inside of you right now. Woman of God. Man of God. Child of God. Servant of God. Hmm. Freedom in the name of Jesus. Amen. Ooh. I cannot wait to hear some praise reports. I cannot wait to hear some praise reports, man. It's 963 of us out here right now. I believe, I believe, I believe He is enough, He's enough, He's enough In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth Thank you Father God for what you're doing Thank you Father God Man, I love, I love, I love Let me see I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. And we welcome you. We welcome you. Every single one of y'all just want to let you know God loves you so, so much. Beautiful. Yes, I see tears. You should, you should read all, man, there's so many messages. I'm crying right now. I receive your, your, your love, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Christ. You're worthy to be praised. I love you. That's what the Holy Spirit does. All he wants to do is glorify the name of King Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Oh, Let us lift his name wherever you at right now. Lift his name up with the fruit of your lips, gratitude in your heart, contentment in your heart. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Come here real fast. Por favor, come here real fast. Man, I love you guys, man. Listen. 
I pray, man, that you guys are blessed. And I pray that you uh that your hearts and your minds are posture right. I pray you have peace tonight. I pray even when we get off, like you feel the peace of God. Man, we got so many things coming up, man. Shout out to uh to the whole team, the Kingdom Music. Um, uh, if you want to partner with the ministry or if you want to be a part of what's going on from events into the conference, we have the women's conference coming up. Man, you can go to www.kingdommusic.org. And I even believe, I, I think they, uh, I wanted Monica to share something on this. Real fast, can you come here? So you can just share with everybody real fast. And Monica can sh share with you guys uh, the conference and, and, and uh, where to go to. Come here, come here, baby. Tell everybody about the about the conference and where to go to and okay hello guys <laughs> look crazy um okay so we have the <laughs> women's conference coming up um the kmf women's conference this is our third year and um this one is called praise and unity and it is open to anyone uh and everyone just women only of course 17 and older um and even if you're if you are have been saved for years if you feel like you're not saved at all and you may not even be ready um Come. this is the place for you anyways <laughs> and we just want to show all the women uh just a beautiful way to praise in unity we have different forms of worship that we're going to be doing um just so many different ways of, of worship uh, uh, to the Lord, and we're gonna do that in praise dance, um, actual singing and dancing, and uh, worship flags and tambourines, and hearing the word of the Lord, and uh, praise and worship uh, and painting yeah. and worship, and it's gonna be a beautiful experience. Where's it um, at though? It is in DFW. It's at the Victory Church, Church in DFW. If you Forward. want. To, yeah, and forward. Uh, if you want more information, you can just go to my Facebook page, Monica Hiltrejo, um, on all platforms, and you can get all the information. You can even meet our leaders. We have lives that we've done. Um, if you scroll through, and it is March 16th, and we also have a sale coming up on the tickets this week. Yeah, so, so stay I'm tuned. A, so is the sale going? It, yeah, the tickets are originally uh, 65. I, I might be off on that, but and it's 65 and, 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 for... And, and the money for the tickets are just to pay for what? That's the general entrance. And that's just uh, to pay for, for, the, for the people you're bringing? And the yes, and for the people you're bringing. You can, if you do, uh, I'd be put on there. You go to um for the women's conference. And you can get all the info on there. But it's $65, and then we're going to have a 10% sale. So, Abby, right? $65, $50. That ain't bad. At all. That's not bad at all. And it's all day from 12 to 8. Doors open at 10. Um, and we're going to have lots and lots of goodies there and giveaways and prizes. And we're also going to have uh, lots of people with different merch. And then even resources, uh, you know, if you are ready to give your life to Christ, if you need therapy or anything, we have resources. When you do walk out the doors, you don't walk out empty-handed. Amen. So bring your sisters, bring your cousins. Bring your... Women discipleship? If you are interested in women discipleship, you do not have to pay. It's totally free. Uh, you just go to kingdommusic.org and you click on the link for uh, KMF Women's Discipleship and you will probably meet some of the most amazing sisters you've probably ever met. And the fellowship is so beautiful. Uh, I know it's online, but it you'll literally gain lifetime sisters and um it won't even feel like you're online. You'll feel like you've known them your whole life. Amen. So you, for that, you go to kingdommusic.org as well, and you click on the link for KMF Women's Discipleship. Hallelujah. We love you guys. <laughs> love you guys. Okay, I love you. 
Okay, I love you guys. I'm going to tune off. I want Monica to share with what's going on with the Women's Conference. Shout out to Abby and the whole team. Shout out to all the KMF leadership. Shout out to Pastor Fred Mendes. Being faithful every Monday, you could join in free men, women, kids every Monday on Zoom, on Facebook. Man, Pastor Fred has been feeding us. We're very blessed to have him, man. Shout out to Pastor Fred. He also has the servanthood shirts and the servant thing. I mean, we're doing um, a fundraiser for him as well to get him the camera. Get him, even though my boy's content with what he has, we want to bless him with excellence, man. So I love you, Pastor Fred Mendes. And um, tomorrow night, we got Servanthood Podcast. I was supposed to be on tomorrow, but I got to go to a basketball tournament. And my dude... He stopped his he stopped his podcast for Tuesday night. Let me get on here and, and teach on contentment. And tomorrow I want y'all every I want all 900 of y'all, all 975 of you guys to make sure you tap into Fred Mendes Servanthood tomorrow night, man. My dude is a blessing uh to the family, to the ministry. Uh shout out to Brian uh, 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 and, and and Yvette. Shout out to Bobby Phoenix. Shout out to Antoine, Portia, Jamie, Jared, Abby, Ruben, the whole team, the prayer line. Uh Shout out to Pastor Ernesto. Um, uh, don't forget the Forgotten Art. We have um, a prison ministry, a prison crusade. There's so many different departments you can get a part and involved in. I pray you guys go to www.kingdommusic.org and whatever you want to uh, lock arms with. There's so many departments from kids to prayer line to women to men to children. Like, man, get in there, participate. We're called to make disciples and go out. Hey, be local. Be faithful in your local community. Make sure you're submitting to your local pastors. Make sure you have that heartbeat to serve where you're at. But it's okay to lock arms worldwide and make and let everybody know know man heaven on earth in the mighty name of jesus i love you guys man shout out to every single one of you i pray tonight you was edified i pray the music brought admonishment i pray that the name of christ was glorified and it was so simple to receive the word man don't ever complicate freedom don't ever complicate christ don't ever complicate kingdom man it should always be simple man uh christ crucified man guess what you want deliverance that's beautiful to stay delivered you need discipleship so tap in man in the mighty name of jesus i love you guys jesus love you guys I salute y'all, man. Bless your families in a full abundance. Amen. Yup. Yeah.